Hi, this is Mark Roth, and this is Mathematics for Social Justice. Today, we're going to look at a problem called the consecutive number puzzle. It's sometimes called trapezoidal numbers and sometimes called polite numbers. But it's an old activity. I know because I'm old, and uh, I, I saw this in conferences when I was uh, in my 20s, 50 years ago. So uh, the first time I saw it was at the CLMR Math Conference in Northern California in approximately about 1974. And the speaker was named Sam Lippman. He was a very charming man, very nice man, and had a very nice way of conducting the, the session. And basically, he didn't let the hot shots in class outpace everybody else. He, everybody was, he gave time for everybody to think. And the problem was basically, if you take these numbers how can you write them as the sum of consecutive positive integers so you can't do one and you can't do two but you can do three three is one plus two and you can't do four but you can do five it's two plus three and notice they're consecutive right and six is one plus two plus three and seven is three plus four. So let's look at some bigger numbers and let's jump to say 18. Maybe 18 can be done more than one way. So one way to do 18, I believe was it might be three plus four plus five plus six. Um, why would I think that? Because here's a core of, I, I call it the, the middle of the core. The core is nine, and then look, here's another nine. And we know nine and nine is 18. So let's see if there's another way to make 18. And well, if I divide 18 by three, I get six. So that could be a single number core. I'll circle it. And then we can have one number below and one number above. And actually, if you move up one from the seven to the Five, it's, it's actually equal to six plus six plus six, which of course is 18. This is two ways to do 18. So some of these numbers can be done more than one way. And if you remember, some numbers can't be done at all. And uh, for example, eight can't be done at all. Like I said, here's a number that can be done two ways. So what about three ways? Is there a number that can be done three ways? I think 15 does that. So 15 is 7 plus 8. 15 is also 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. And 15 is also 4 plus 5 plus 6. And that's about as much as I learned from Sam Lippman. By the way, I went to that talk more than once. I, I enjoyed his talk so much. He, he just was a wonderful presenter. And we had a lot of wonderful presenters at Asilomar in the 1970s, but he was definitely one of them. Now, another person I've mentioned in these videos is Bob Wirtz. And definitely Bob Wirtz put this problem on his worksheets. So a lot of the presenters back in those days presented this problem. But I don't remember them getting into too much depth. So I didn't get into, into any further de depth until I worked with the Julie Robinson Festival and specifically with Joshua Zucker. When Josh ran the festival, he, uh, he wrote a lot of his own worksheets and I was a table leader using his worksheet and it, it went into more depth. So, one thing I learned from working with his worksheet was that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between most of the odd factors of a number and the number of ways you can do it. So like if you, if you make a factor tree for 15, it's three times five, right? And these are the two prime numbers. So then you can make a chart. And I think I've shown these charts before where you, you, you have three 
as a prime factor. So you can use that as a building block. So you can either use a three or not use a three. If you don't use the three, you use one. And five is a prime factor. You can either use it or not use it. And then if you fill this in, you get one, three, five, and 15. Here's the deal. You don't use one. One doesn't help you get one of these uh, consecutive sums, but the other three do if they're odd. And so they, they are all odd. That means 15 should have three sums, and we, we found the three sums for 15. So the question is, why, why doesn't one work? Well, actually, one would work if you, if you would let 15 be one of the sums. So if, uh, if you want to change the problem and say, say one's OK, then, then you have to allow for 15. And then so there's got to be some kind of a pairing between three and five and 15 and the three ways you can write, write 15 as a, a sum of consecutive positive integers. So now we'd like to do a proof. So that's the most sophisticated step, I guess, is to actually prove this is the case, not just believe it, but uh, actually prove it. I'm gonna do something a little radical. I'm gonna change the rules. And so basically I'm gonna destroy <laughs> the consecutive number puzzle, but then I'm gonna try to re resurrect it. So one change is we're going to allow for, like for 15, we'll allow this as a good one, okay? And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to say no more even numbers of digits. It's always got to be an odd number of digits. I'll write it like this. So one number is okay. And an even number... I'll write summons for the for the each number is out. So I remember when we did 18, we did um, I believe we did three, four, five plus six is 18. That's out. Temporarily, we're not going to allow this, but we are going to allow negative integers and in zero. So zero or negative integers they're okay so this is so we're 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 broadening the thing now we're saying you you can you can use negative integers you can use zero but these are out you can't have an even number of summons so when you add up your numbers you have to have an odd number of numbers that you're adding no more even number of numbers and you can just say one number is okay, because after all, one is an odd number. How is that going to help us understand why there's a connection between the odd factors of a number and how many ways you can find the sum? Well, let's, let's try a number. So let's, let's start like with 22. What are the odd factors? We have one and we have 11, right? When we use one, we just get 22. What's, what's going on when we have 11? Well, it's a factor. What do we want to do with a factor? We want to divide. So if you divide 11 into 22, you get 2. And, and so you can break 22 into 11 twos. So this is going to be 11 twos. And which one's in the middle? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 is in the middle. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to move one from here to here, move two from here to here, move three from here to here. And when I do that, I still have my two in the middle, but then it's going to go down one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three. And going up here, I'm going to have three, four, five, six, and seven. So two is in the middle. And I have five above, and I have five below. If we add all this up, do we get 22? Well, let's see. When you add the numbers one through seven, you get 28. And when you add negative one, negative two, negative three, you get negative six. And if you subtract six from 20, 
8, you do get 22. So this sum, it's good now, temporarily. It's good. We made 22, and this is 11 numbers. So we have, a, we have 11 numbers. We're allowed to use 0, and we're allowed to use negatives now. Forgive me for not writing all the plus signs. But anyway, I'm adding up all these, all these integers, and I'm getting 22 with the new rules. But what if I want to go back to the original rules? Well, look, all this is equal to 0, right? And since it's equal to 0, we can just eliminate it. And what's left? 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. Okay, so I think you can see what I'm getting at. What do you do with the negative factors of 22? Okay, you divide by them. And what are the, what are the two numbers? 1 and 11. You divide by 1 into 22 and you get 22. You divide by 11 and 22 and you get 2. So you end up with 11 twos equal to 22. And then you... You start moving a digit, then two digits, and three digits. You end up with this sequence. And then, if you want to go back to the original goal of not having negatives and not having zero, all this adds up to zero. What's left? So in the original rules, it was okay to have an even number of summons. Okay? It wasn't okay to have any negatives. It wasn't okay to have zero. So I believe that that pretty much shows you at least one example Let's try another one. Another example, let's use, let's use 14. So you start with 14, you get 2 times 7, and these are both prime. And if you make your little chart, you got 1 or 2, 1 or 7, you get 1, 2, 7, and 14. This is the only odd digit other than one. We're not going to count the one in the original problem. So that means there should be one way to make 14. If we do use one, that goes with just 14. So 14 is how you would make 14 with the new rules. And what about the old rules? So if you, how, what's going on with seven? With the new rules, you divide seven into 14 and you get seven twos. And uh, let me just write commas instead. Of plus signs. So these are your seven twos that up to 14. And this is the one in the middle. And let's go ahead and move one from here to here. Move two from here to here. Move three from here to here. So that makes this one, zero, negative one. It makes this three, four, and five. In the new rules, this should add up to 14. So let's see, we have 9, 12. Okay, I forgot my 2. Sorry about that. So we have 9, 12, 14, 15, minus 1 is 14. So this is all 14. But again, we can take these numbers, and they add up to 0. So we can just eliminate 0, and we get the sum... 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. And that does add up to 14. Because after all, we have 7 and then another 7. So what's left? We haven't talked about the numbers you can't do. So we can't do 1, we can't do 2, we can't do 4, we can't do 8, we can't do 16, we can't do 32. So these numbers should be recognizable, and they're the powers of 2. So how should we try to prove that you can't do the powers of 2? Maybe we should talk about why these numbers are sometimes... The numbers that you can do are called trapezoidal numbers. Okay, and that's what, for example, Joshua Zucker called them and many other people. When you have... And let's say you eliminate these. 
what do you have left? You have three plus four plus five. So when you take off some of the top of, an, of a triangular array of dots, what you have left are dots that add up to one of the uh, numbers that you can add uh, consecutive positive integers to get them. So for example, three plus four plus five is 12, right? So this shows you a picture of 12. And, and again, it has many names. It's called polite, trapezoidal, or I just say consecutive positive integers. So if we want to prove you can't do the powers of two, we would have to show that when you, you take a triangular number and you subtract a smaller triangular number, as long as it's basically, they can't be adjacent triangular numbers. So when, if you write down the triangular numbers, you, they're, they're 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28, 36, etc. And, and there's a formula for these. You've probably seen it before, but in case you haven't, it's, it's n times n plus 1 divided by 2. This formula will give you the uh, triangular numbers. To get a trapezoidal number, you can take a triangular number away from a bigger triangular number, but they can't be adjacent triangular numbers. Like, for example, if you do 15 minus 10, they're adjacent, and you get 5. That's okay, but, but if you do 10 minus 6, you get 4, and that's not okay. You can't make 4. But if you do, like, 15 take away 6, if, if they have to be at least 2 apart, then you can do it. So 15 take away 6 is 9. And nine is a trapezoidal number or a polite number, okay? It's equal to the sum of positive consecutive integers. Okay, or 28 minus 15, that's 13, you can do that. You go 36 minus 21, it's 15, you can do that. The only time you run in trouble is if you do something like 36, take away 28, where, where they're right next to each other. Okay, so now to try to do a proof that you can't write a power of two as a sum of consecutive positive integers, Let's say you have some integers that add up to k. I mean, so you have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus, and then you eventually get to k. All right? And then you have another one where you go further. So you go 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, and you get to k. But then you go at least two more. And let's say that let's say there's L more. So you get to K plus L. So now I want to show that if you take this sum and subtract this sum, you can't get a power of two. So this particular sum is K plus L times k plus l plus 1 divided by 2. And this sum is k times k plus 1 divided by 2. Actually, we want to subtract. Because when you take off the top of the triangle, what's left will be a trapezoidal number. And so if we do this, work this out algebraically, we'll get a we'll get the algebraic form of a trapezoidal number. And then we want to prove that it can't be a power of 2. So if we do the algebra and we multiply, we're going to get k squared plus kl plus k. And then we're going to get another lk, so I'm going to put a 2 there. And then we're going to get l squared and then we're going to get L. Here we're going to be taking away K squared and K when we subtract. So we're subtracting K squared and subtracting K, all this over 2. So when we do the subtraction, we lose this term and this term, and we lose this term and this term. So what do we have left? We have an L in each term. So we can factor out an L. And we have 2K 
plus L plus 1. Again, all over 2. Now suppose L, suppose L is even. If L is even, then this is going to be even, even, plus 1 makes this odd. So when, this, when L is even, the other factor is odd. But what if L is odd? If L is odd, that means 1 plus this odd would be even, plus 2K would be even. So when L is even, the other factor is odd. And when L is odd, the other factor is even. This is equal to the trapezoidal number, but it can't be a power of 2 because you're going to have, when you multiply an even times an odd, you can't get rid of that odd factor. So remember, a power of 2 has no odd factor. So if you, for example, 16 is 2 to the 4th power, there's no odd factor. But here, this number will have an odd factor. So all trapezoidal numbers will be in this form, and they'll all have an odd factor. So that should prove that, uh, that you can't have a trapezoidal number or a polite number or a number that's the sum of consecutive positive integers, which is the power of 2. And uh, to give credit, uh, I got this proof from uh, a paper by John J. Watkins. And, um, and John J. Watkins had two co-authors from a Colorado University or college. This paper was uh, shared with me by Ron Lancaster, my Canadian friend and colleague, who also loves this particular lesson. So Ron Lancaster, again, my Canadian friend, he also shared another paper with me by uh, W.Y. Pong, who is a professor at Cal State University, Dominguez Hills. And he basically, in his paper, he proved it the same way I did. I didn't learn the proof from him, but he basically did it the same way. So he wrote a very nice paper, and I want to give him credit as well.